Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Your Roy, hailed as the King of Dancehall, dies at 78. Legendary pioneer of Dancehall, Your Roy is dead. The veteran toaster reportedly died in his native Jamaica on Wednesday night after ailing for some time. He was 78. Tributes flowed freely on social media Wednesday night as musicians expressed sorrow at the passing of pioneering godfather of Jamaican music. Dancehall superstar Shaggy posted, Today we lost one of our heroes, a true legend in this game of dancehall reggae. If you're a fan of sound system, then you're a fan of Stergov's sound. With such greats as Colonel Josie Wales and Charlie Chaplin, pioneers in this game, with a catalogue of amazing recordings, you Roy was a master of his craft. Rest well, Daddy Roy. R.I.P. Walk good. David Rodigan posted on Twitter, R.I.P. Daddy you Roy, the icon toaster who changed the paradigm of Jamaican music when he voiced the Virgin Galore album. I was always in awe of him, the tone of voice, the cadence, the lyrical shimmering, and rhythm riding made him the sole adventurer. Hugh Roy, born in Ward Beckford in Kingston, is credited with popularizing the art of toasting on reggae rhythm in the early days of dancehall when the sound system ruled the roost. He burst onto the scene during the heyday of Clement Sir Coxstone Dance Studio One sound system and record label at a period when reggae music and its now hugely popular offspring dance hall was frowned upon by the wider society and was seen as the music of the uneducated and uncultured. His Wake the Town and Wear You to the Ball featuring John Holt were huge hits and he followed up with several other chart busters including Creation Rebel, Callis in the Palace and Dread into Babylon. The success of Dread into Babylon led to a series of Tony Robinson-produced album, Natty Rebel in 1976, Rasta Ambassador in 1977, and Just Son of Africa in 1978. Beckford's international popularity led to the album Natty Rebel being released in 1976 on Virgin's imprint Frontline label in Nigeria as well as in France on Virgin and Polydor. Yu Roy is also credited for opening the door to allow rap and dancehall artists to realize huge profits from an idiom he, along with Count Machuki and King Stitch, created and perfected. He was also the owner of the Stergov sound system, which honed the careers of veteran DJs Charlie Chaplin, Josie Wales, and Supercat, among others. In 1980, the pop group Blondie had a worldwide hit with the reggae track The Tide Is High, which prompted Virgin to re-release the original Paragons track from 1967 and the 1971 UI version as a single that same year. Uroy's most recent album is Pray For The People, which was released in 2012. Three guns seized within less than 24 hours in St. Andrew Central Division. Police personnel from the St. Andrew Central Division seized three firearms and 32 assorted rounds of ammunition during three separate operations in the division with less than 24 hours. Five persons, including a woman, are now in custody in relation to two of the seizures. The first seizure occurred on Monday, February 15th at about 2 p.m., when law enforcement personnel were on the Upper Ivy Road, where a premises was searched and a .38 Smith and Western revolver with 5 mm rounds of ammunition was seized. No one was arrested in relation to that seizure. In the second incident, at about 6.10 a.m. on Tuesday, February 16, a joint police and military operation was conducted on Terrence Avenue, where a premises that was occupied by two men was searched and a 9mm Taurus pistol with a magazine containing 12 9mm rounds of ammunition was seen hidden inside a chest of drawers. The men were taken into custody 
in relation to the seizure. However, their identities are being withheld pending further investigation. At 7 a.m. the same day, the police reported they seized the third firearm at a house on Ambrook Lane that was occupied by two men and a woman. The house was searched and a 9mm Berita pistol with a magazine containing 15 9mm rounds of ammunition was reportedly found on top of the roof. The three occupants of the house were taken into custody, however, their identities are being withheld pending further investigation. Investigations continue into the three seizures. Two St. James men charged with gun crimes. Two St. James men were arrested and charged with firearm-related crimes in two separate incidents in the parish. The police says 37-year-old Lucan O'Connor, otherwise called broker of Providence Heights, flanker in St. James, was charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition last Thursday. Lawmen said that about 6.30 a.m., a joint police military team armed with a warrant went to O'Connor's residence. During a search of the premises, a Taurus 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 10 9mm cartridges was found inside a bedroom wrapped in socks. He was arrested and later charged following an interview. In the second incident, 27-year-old Shadane Murray of Lilliput in the parish was on Monday charged with wounding with intent in relation to an incident that occurred in the area on Friday, February 5th. The police said that about 2.45 p.m., Murray allegedly attempted to abduct the complainant at gunpoint. A struggle ensued, the complainant was shot but managed to escape. The police were called and the injured man taken to hospital for treatment. Investigations led to the arrest of Murray, who was placed on an identification parade that same day where he was pointed out by the complainant. The court dates for both accused are being finalized. Robert Flees leaving bail book at crime scene. The Saints and police say they were able to nab a robber after he left his condition of bail book at the scene of the crime in exchange or in the parish on Friday, February 5th. The police say 24-year-old Javier Amos has been charged with housebreaking and larceny. The police said that about 12.15 p.m., Amos kicked in the door of a shop and stole the contents. He then left, leaving behind his condition of bail book. The police were called and Amos was subsequently arrested and charged. A date for his appearance in court is being finalized by the police. Saint and man charged for stealing $300 and cell phone. 24-year-old laborer Damani Brinton has been charged with burglary and larceny after he broke into a house in Greenwich Eggs, St. Anne, and stole $300 and a cellular phone on Wednesday, February 3. The police said 33-year-old Damian Newman has been charged with receiving stolen property after he reported the purchase of SIM card and cellular phone from Brinton. The police said that about 11.30 p.m., Brigton forced open the window to the bedroom of a dwelling house and stole the cash on a Samsung Galaxy S8 cellular phone. A report was made and an investigation launched, leading to the arrest of Brinton and Newman. Their court date is being finalized. CPFSA looking to recruit 150 foster parents. The Jamaica Protection and Family Services Agency CPFSA is looking to recruit 150 foster parents this year under its foster care program. As part of the recruitment drive, the agency said it will be staging promotional walkthroughs in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth, Mandeville, Manchester, and Maypen Clarendon today and at Fairview, St. James, and Ocho Royals and Bel Air in St. Anne tomorrow. The drive will take place over a six-week period as the agency seeks to place as many children as possible in loving, healthy family environments. It is part of activities for Foster Care Week, which is being observed from February 14 to 20 under the theme, Every Child Needs a Family. In addition to the promotional walkthroughs, the CPFSA 
announced that it will be setting up information boards, conducting media interviews, staging appreciation and training sessions for foster parents, among other things. Foster care officer at the CPFSA's Morant Bay branch, Judine Webb Brown, said that this year's Foster Care Week reiterates the CPFSA's mandate to provide healthy family environments for children in state care. We try to pair them with loving families through foster care. Our aim is always to place children with families so that they can experience what it is like to be a part of a healthy family life. You would be giving a child the opportunity to become a productive citizen by sharing your resources with them and welcoming them into your family, she noted. She said that while activities for Foster Care Week have been scaled back due to COVID-19 restrictions, the agency continues its engagements remotely. COVID has put a damper on some of our activities in that we can't do as many physical face-to-face -face activities as we normally would, but the agency is resilient. We try to maintain contact over the internet, and we have a lot of activities being done online to engage our present and potential foster parents, she noted. The foster care program is a component of the CPFSA's Living in the Family Environment Life Program. It is a legal process that allows non-biological parents to care for children in state care, providing them with a stable, nurturing environment which contributes positively to their overall development. Children placed in foster care are usually those who have been abused, orphaned, abandoned, neglected, or unable to be cared for by their parents or relatives. There are currently 1,126 children in foster care, comprising 52 males and 604 females. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.